Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 616. How Mitochondria Get Sick? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So we talked about mitochondria last time as a one or two or three little jelly beans in each of your billions of cells in your body. And mitochondria are the furnaces or the engine to your car, basically. To, if the cell is the car, your mitochondria is the engine. It takes blood sugar and it actually creates energy. So it is the basis for what we call cellular respiration. It's taking oxygen and it's taking blood sugar and it's making energy. So that's the very smallest part. Then all the cells, of course, make uh, tissue and the tissue itself is burning calories because each cell is burning calories. But mitochondria are very important and we need to keep them healthy. Keeping mitochondria healthy uh, requires that, believe it or not, we have to keep our lives healthy. So um, today we're going to talk about something called oxidative stress, which is a kind of a catch-all term they've given for um, mitochondria that are not working properly. And we're going to talk about how to treat oxidative stress, how to prevent oxidative stress. Uh, so what we're talking about with oxidative stress is this. And I think it's pretty simple. We have oxygen that we breathe in, and oxygen is good for us, right? Well, oxidative stress is when your oxygen is not just oxygen, but it is either lost or gained an electron, and it makes it unstable. When oxygen is unstable, it's called a free radical. So you always see commercials, oh, get rid of your free radicals. Well, that's what that is. It's, it's an oxygen with one too, one too many or one too few electrons, so it's unstable. It's kind of like bouncing around in there, damaging your cell. So we can also call, call it reactive oxygen. It is not healthy to have this kind of oxygen. So what happens? If you have that, you cannot have a healthy cell and make good energy. You have to balance all of those abnormal oxygens with antioxidants. That's where the name for vitamin E, C, D, and A came from. They're a group of antioxidants. And these antioxidants neutralize these, these oxygens that are not stable. They stabilize them. And then you can use them to make energy. And then you take, so basically you're taking away unstable oxygen. Why do you want to know this? Well, partially because even though it is not necessary for you to understand the workings of your cell for you to be healthy, you have to understand why we recommend vitamins and certain foods and certain minerals because these certain foods and minerals and, and vitamins are all antioxidants. They are balancing the damage that has occurred in our cells from our environment. So this is, did I mention it changes your DNA and it changes your RNA? That's also another problem. When you have oxidative stress, you damage the enzymes, the DNA, and the RNA in your cell, which then leads to cells becoming cancerous, or then leads to cell death. So it's very important that you fix this imbalance in your cells so that you can be healthy on a macrocosmic level, which is our whole body, versus our microcosmic level, which is our cell. I can hear you now saying, I don't need to know this. So I, I get that. Um, I just want to give you the reason we use all these names 
And the reason they coin these phrases to make them sound much more scientific so that you will then take your vitamins or take your minerals. So basically, what is the problem? The problem is our lifestyles are not healthy. We don't exercise every day. We are not at the ideal weight. Our food is processed, over-processed. It is not fresh. It doesn't have all the natural vitamins, minerals, and enzymes in it. Um, we have a lot of chemicals in our food uh, that are basically preservatives or chemicals used to make it taste better. Even sweeteners um, can be uh, chemicals that will cause oxidative stress. So when we look at our life, here are the things that are very important to decrease. One, the first one is being overweight or obesity. Obesity basically causes you to have a lot of oxidative stress, and it causes you to um, make a lot of free radicals, and you have to balance that with taking excellent um, supplements, basically. Uh, your, your vitamins, your minerals, any enzymes that you might need to... Um, to digest your foods. Now, diets high in animal fat, simple fat, and sugar and processed foods. All of those increase your oxidative stress, increase your um, free radicals. You're going to have to balance that. The more of that you eat, the more good stuff you have to eat to balance it. Exposure to radiation, radiation in your computer, in your television, in your phone, from the sun, from living uh, near a power plant. I mean, all of those things are things in our lives that change our cells and increase the number of free radicals in our body. We have to balance that to negate the effect it has on us. Smoking cigarettes, all tobacco products, increase oxidative stress. Um, alcohol com combust or combustion, excuse me, consumption, um, causes you to... It's a poison, so your body reacts by trying to uh, minimize the protein, the the um, minimize the toxin. So it's going to cause free radicals, and you're going to have to balance that as well. Some medications, which I won't list, it's a long list: pollution of the air, pollution of the water, pollution of the ground, um, exposure to pesticides and industrial chemicals, which we seem to all be exposed to nowadays and heavy metals like cadmium and mercury. You can get mercury in fish, you can get cadmium in yellow um, um, colors, paints. So we try to keep them out, but in some, in some old paints, well, you'll find cadmium. It's sometimes in batteries as well. So one of the reasons we don't want you to swallow a battery. Um, so these are all of the things in our environment that cause oxidative stress and inflammation. It's amazing that any of us gets past all of this. Uh, when, it's, when all of these things are long-term, when your body is exposed to these different um, chemicals, toxins, and uh, radiation, then your cells individually all, are all being attacked by free radicals. There are even some medications, which of course I, I listed last time, and that was um, statins. Statins inactivate your mitochondria. So that, it's yet ju just another way to make your mitochondria not work well and keep you from actually making energy and clearing out your cell of, of free radicals. So look at your life and think of all the things that you do the fast food that you eat, the junk food you eat, the processed foods that you eat, the time you spend in the sun without uh, sunscreen, the time you spend in the sun with sunscreen. Um, and then you have to look on the, at something to balance it. So if you have a really long list of things that you do that are increasing your free radicals, then you're setting yourself up for illness and setting yourself up for cancers, and for many illnesses like autoimmune diseases, heart disease, all the diseases we consider go along with aging because you're collecting all of these as you go. So what do we do about it? Well, antioxidants, and I'll go over a list of those, um, in supplements 
are a very good way to counteract all of these things we've collected in our lives. Micronutrients, um, very basic nutrients that we can take as supplements will help us. Um, stopping all the bad habits of smoking and drinking or decreasing it. Illicit drug use is also one of the things that causes us to have a lot of free radicals and make us very sick. Um, the antidote to all of this is antioxidants. So um, the antioxidants in food, you'll love this, dark chocolate. So more dark chocolate you eat, the uh, fewer free radicals you'll have. Uh, pecans, I'm just going to list the foods. Pecans, blueberries, strawberries, artichokes, goji berries, uh, raspberries, kale, which I can eat all this other stuff, but I just can't do kale, but some people think it's, well, it's great. Um, coffee, cranberries, green tea, garlic, grapes with skins, popcorn, yogurt, and broccoli. All of those have antioxidants and help cleanse your cells and just cleanse your body of free radicals. Those should all be included in your diet. The vitamins and nutrients that you can add that are in addition to these foods um, are the, the vitamins E, D, and A. Those are lipid-soluble vitamins that are also antioxidants. So they are going to counteract those those uh, oxygen molecules that have one too many or one too few electrons. You can also take vitamin C. It is an excellent antioxidant. The omega-3 oils that we find in fish is also good. DHA, another oil, uh, which we've now found is really good for nursing mothers. We give it to pregnant women in their prenatal vitamins. Alpha-lipoic acid is another an uh, antioxidant. Coenzyme Q, the, one, the antioxidant we give you to balance statins. Everyone who's on a statin should take coenzyme Q, 200 milligrams a day. Uh, one of the uh, minerals, the tiny minerals that we need, micronutrients, is selenium. And zinc is another um, micronutrient that you need to be healthy and to counteract these, these um, abnormal uh, chemicals in your body. Resveratrol is found in grape skins. Resveratrol is an anti-aging kind of a substance, which means it cleans up your cells and decreases the free radicals. Iodine, we put a lot of people on iodine who have low thyroids. Methylated folate, which helps you safely divide your cells. You know, your cells are all dividing at all times. Some cells die, some cells divide and grow. So to grow your cells and get healthy cells, you should have folate methylfolate. Last two are glutamine, uh, which is in bone broth, and NAC, which is a, um, is a substance that actually cleans out your liver. So those are the nutrients and the antioxidants that I would suggest that you consider. And I don't mean you have to take all of these, but you should pick the ones that you can and also the foods that I listed, try to get those foods into your diet to help clean up your body. It's, it's almost like a cleanse, but it's not so severe. It is just naturally cleansing your body of the free radicals, making you healthier and less likely to get cancer or to get autoimmune disease, to get heart disease, um, and uh, any other disease of aging, osteoporosis. Uh, all of those things are made much more um, healthy. All of those diseases go away when you are taking the right antioxidants. And lastly, if you will consider taking and replacing the hormones that you are missing, that also sets your body up to be healthier and to be able to fight the free radicals, such as testosterone decreases cancer many ways by increasing the number of T-killer cells and T-helper cells. In that way, it's killing the cells that have been damaged by free radicals. So there are many other ways and other healthy um, habits that you can take on yourself so that you will be healthier and cleanse your body more. Obviously, we talked about good food. Exercise every single day is absolutely required of people. 
I don't care if you're running up and down the stairs of your house 30 times or if you're going to the gym, but you need to exercise every day and not for five minutes, but for an hour. So if you can think of something you love to do, exercise helps cleanse your body of free radicals as well. And it's one of the things that keeps our heart healthy and our brain healthy. So it is something you can do without having to pay for it. You just have to go out and walk or run. These are things, sound simple, you have to get them into your schedule. You have to get it into your daily, I guess, if you have a calendar or if you have a, a book that has your appointments in it, put it down as, as an appointment. And make sure you have all of your antioxidants to take every night before you go to bed or take every morning with breakfast, but have a time when you take those or you'll forget. We're human creatures. We forget all the time. So we have to have a routine that we do every single day. So if you want to be healthy and you want to stop the damage to your cells and get your mitochondria nice and healthy, these are the ways to do it. And it isn't hard. It just takes concentration and it takes getting rid of the bad habits that you've collected over your lifetime and then start some new good habits. Please join us next time and um, we'll talk about something else that will keep you healthy. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.